Praise the Lord. We are living in very last days. And many things are happening. Wars everywhere and rumors of war everywhere. Terrorism and things that we only read of in the Bible. And many people never even imagined those things will happen in our days. But those things are happening. Now when these things happen, they bring about anxiety in the hearts of men. And that anxiety ends up bringing depression because people don't know what to do. But the scripture has a very clear mitigation to this problem. There is nothing that happens that the Lord doesn't know. And so as a child of God, you just need to know what the word of God says about what is happening today and the days that we are living in. Today, I want us to look at the book of Proverbs, chapter 12 and verse 25. These are powerful words of Solomon, the king of Israel. You know, this guy, Solomon, is an amazing individual because this guy walked with God and he took over leadership or the reins of power over the nation of Israel from his father, King David. And you all understand that this young man asked God to lavish him with the spirit of wisdom and God lavished him with great wisdom and then the Lord also had a lot of favor over his life. He lavished him with wealth and riches. But in the aspect of wisdom, Solomon gives us very important counsel from the Lord and this is what he says in verse 25. Anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. So if you want to experience gladness, look at the word of God. Surround yourself with people who speak things that edify you. We live in a society where many people around us, like I, every time I travel, like when I travel overseas and on missionary work, in the past I should say, when I came back, there were people lining up to tell me something that didn't happen right. Or while I'm still overseas doing ministry, someone is calling me to tell me something about the problems that are happening. And some of the things that they are reporting are things that they should by themselves fix. And actually they have got no reason to call me to tell me that. But the reason why they do that is the enemy lines up people. Some people do it without knowing that the enemy is lining them up to call you or to write you or to just upon arrival someone tells you something that is very negative. Friend, you have got to build yourself by listening to the word of God. Listening to those things that edify you. Listening to those things that build you. Don't surround yourself with men and women that speak things that will bring, that will dampen your spirits. It doesn't help. You have got the right. And if you are in a place and you live among people, why can't you just tell people, please, I am not interested in this kind of talk because it doesn't help. It doesn't edify. Someone is sitting you down and just telling you about this and that and this and that. And by the way, I've observed that one of the reasons why leaders, and those of you who are leaders and listening to this broadcast, I want you to listen to this very keenly. Many of you have given yourselves over and allowed yourself to be almost like a dustbin that people bring everything negative. Someone, if you have a corporation that these kinds of people that are always coming to report to you, accusing so and so, telling you such and a thing happened. And the question is, if those things happen, let those people also tell you what effort they make to solve the problem rather than trying to weigh you down with those words. When you read that same verse in the King James Version, it says, Heaviness in the heart of a man maketh him stoop, maketh him stoop. 
but a good word maketh him glad. You don't have to allow words that dampen your spirits. It took me time, let me tell you, to learn how to let my team understand that coming to me with negative reporting is not what I called you here. Or what, I don't think God brought you in my life to be always beating me down with negative reporting because negative reporting is not from the Lord. Now let's go back to the scripture. Anxiety in the heart of a man causes depression. Now listen. So depression emanates first from the heart. The heart becomes anxious and that anxiety quickly graduates into depression because anxiety is normally in the heart. Depression is in the mind. So before the mind is depressed, the heart is troubled. And I believe that's why the Bible tells us to guard our hearts. Guard our hearts. Apostle Paul, before he left the church in Ephesus, he called the elders and told them to guard their hearts. Because when you let anxiety come into your heart, and by the way, that is why again the Lord says, put on the breastplate of righteousness so that you guard your heart from the attacks of the enemy that target your heart. When you are away from home and someone at home calls you and reports something, that they should, if it is something that is so serious that they should first call the police or call the neighbor or call an elder. You are, uh, you, let's say you are, in, you are in Mombasa and something is happening in Bungoma. You are in the Western Kenya and then there is the East Coast. I mean, and then someone calls you and is telling you something that your immediate neighbor could resolve. Something that your God could resolve something that your brothers who are within the vicinity could resolve. The purpose of all that thing, all those things, is for the devil to put anxiety in your heart. And as anxiety rules your heart, that anxiety graduates into a depression and you'll spend a sleepless night, you will have insomnia, you'll have headache, just because there is anxiety in your heart. And, and, and the King James calls it heaviness of heart. So beloved, the Bible tells us, and I will be, I'll say this scripture over and over again, the Apostle Paul writing to the Philippians in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, he says, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, but in everything, but, I like that but, but in everything. There are so many reasons why you, could, you so many things that happen in your life that could make you anxious. But if you want to overcome anxiety, to counter those things, do it with prayer. Bring this thing to the Lord. Petition, put God to remembrance of his word, his covenant, his promises, and his character. And then he says, thanksgiving. And I told, and I've told you even in the previous class, I told you, the most defiant spirit against the devil is thanksgiving and worship. People who are thankful, even in the midst of, of adversity, like Job, everything is gone. And the Bible tells us Job fell down on his face and worshipped God. When you worship God, you are proving. When you worship God in adversity, not worshiping God when things are good, Many people are only wonderful worshippers because they have money in their pocket. They are wonderful worshippers because they have their wives with them or their husbands with them. But will you worship God in times of adversity? 
when your beloved loved one dies, when you are betrayed by someone you trusted, will you still worship God? Or will you allow heaviness? I have had people say, and, and their butt is, the, the butt that does not lead them to God is the butt that, but that leads them into depression. If I told you, sister, cast these things to the Lord, and you tell me, but I loved this man. How could he do this? I tell you, forgive him. You say, but how can I forgive? Why would he do this to me? Please, sister, the Bible tells us forgive. But then you say, but pastor, this man, I have been faithful to him. Sister, the word of God tells us forgive. Let your but be that but that leads you to God, not the but that leads you into further depression. How many times have you used but to have yourself more sunken into depression? But you can also use a but. Like, for example, you say, okay, I'm going through these problems. This is what we are. My husband has rejected us, rejected me, dumped me. But I will hope in the Lord, and because of my children, I am going to remain strong. You have shown that you don't want the heaviness of heart that will bring you to a place of depression. So I pray that God may help you to stick to the word of God and never allow depression in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you. And I give you praise and glory because of your faithfulness. Lord, help each one of us to overcome anxiety. Let us guard our hearts, Lord, that anxiety will never find its place in our hearts and that, Lord, depression will not come into our lives. Today, Lord, you have rebuked us. You have corrected us. Lord, you have spoken to us. You have told us not to give room to anxiety, not to, that we may learn to hand over things to God. Those things that we are not able to do, we shouldn't struggle with them. We hand them over to the Lord and God will give us victory. Father, I bless you and I honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To continue enjoying this spiritual nourishment, click on subscribe button below. Click on the notification bell to become the first to know when we upload another video. Thank you and see you in our next broadcast.